Well, warm greetings from the Southern Counties Baptist Association staff team, especially as we go into September. As soon as I say the word September, we all of us perhaps think of the fact that this is traditionally the start of a very busy time of year for churches and for the rest of our lives, for children and uh, students going back to school and to college and to university. For churches, often it's the time when there's quite a lot in our programme if we talk in those ways. This year, of course, it's entirely different. September means, even though lockdown has eased a bit, it means continuing to find ways of being able to cope with the restrictions that are still in place. The ways in which our meeting together can't be as we would like them to be. The ways in which even if we are choosing to meet together, there are huge amounts of work involved as we try to do that safely for all concerned. Normally, of course, September is also the time when we would be sensing a, a fresh spurt of energy because many of us have either had a different pace during August or we've actually managed to get away. I was very surprised myself to come back from holiday, uh, one week away uh, physically by the River Dart, one week where we really found ways of reconnecting with family, to find that as I sat down at my desk to return to work, a sense of despondency and anxiety, a sense that although there have been good things in my holiday, I really wasn't looking forward to returning to work in the ways in which we are now having to operate. Not helped by an eye problem, which has been going on for some months, but nevertheless, uh, it, was, uh, it surprised me. It was reassuring, therefore, to talk to other people and find that words like dread and anxiety and apprehension were all used about returning to work, even though those people had had a, a break. Another word that was used was melancholy and just a sense of uh, sadness and just a, a low mood about re-entering the fray as it's become. So it's really important that we get the chance to acknowledge that. It's all very well to find ways to cope with a novel situation. And so many of us, so many of you, have worked extraordinarily hard to be creative, to master new skills, to involve people as best you can in uh, new ways of uh, communicating online and, of course, in the pastoral work that's gone on as well. But when you get to the stage of realising you need a second wind and fresh breath to be able to continue, that can be quite a shock. And it can be a shock if you've had a break and it doesn't feel enough. So it's made me reflect hugely about what's going on. It's made me acknowledge the possibility for all of us of burnout, where we are driving and pushing ourselves so hard and so against our grain or against the grain, that actually it's unsustainable. And some of that, of course, can be expectations for ourselves. Some of it can be expectations of others, where they're wanting us to, as it were, do things in a way which is simply not possible at this time. And I've been reminded of Jesus and the disciples in the encounter that they have when the disciples come back in Mark chapter 6 from having had a go at the ministry to which Jesus has commissioned them. It's been heady, exciting, halcyon days probably as they've gone into different villages two by two and they've made known that God is on people's side, that God wants to free them from the different things that restrict them from life and from goodness and from God. And they come back and they tell Jesus everything that they've been saying and doing. It's a lovely picture of uh, excitement, but uh, mixed with probably tiredness. But it's a good tiredness because you've been out there and involved in ministry. And Jesus 
as we might expect, understands their need, not simply to talk it out, not simply for a debrief, but actually something bigger and better than that. And so he says, come away with me by yourselves to a deserted place and get some rest. Come away with me by yourselves to a deserted place and get some rest. And so they get into a boat to do exactly that. But what we're told is that people realise where they're headed, the deserted wild place that they're headed to, and they get there before them. So that when they get the other side, actually, Jesus, uh, compassionate as ever, seeing them as sheep harassed and lost like sheep without a shepherd, actually continues to teach and to minister to them. And then later on, he makes arrangements for them to go off in a boat by themselves to get some uh, space. And also he himself goes up on the mountainside to pray. But it's this experience of being in the boat with Jesus that I want to invite you into in this short reflection. One of the people that was surprised by the fact that their holiday hadn't refreshed them decided that he would simply sit as best he could, quietly, as best he could, with Jesus. Doing nothing else and just waiting. And one of the things that actually was concluded, something that I myself concluded as well, for, for my own experience was the importance of hearing those words of Jesus come away with me by yourselves and get some rest but in parallel with that also hearing these words of Jesus to those that are driven by religious programs and necessities uh, and uh, icons and indeed idols when Jesus says are you tired worn out burned out on religion Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Of course, that was the message version. In the original version, Jesus is talking about being tired and carrying heavy loads and uh, him giving rest. And Jesus talks about taking his yoke upon us, a good fitting yoke one that actually we can live with. It's not that we don't do any work, but it's one that we can live with. So I'm holding together two passages, one from Mark 6 about come away with me by yourselves, another in the context of also being exhausted and having spent oneself in Matthew 11 about coming to Jesus and responding to his invitation to be with him. Both of them are about reflecting on what we need to say to Jesus. So here's a question. If you take some time after this video reflection to be as best you can quiet with Christ, I wonder what it is that you need to tell him about and name before him that's true for you at this time. What do you need to tell him? What do you need to ask him at this time? You may let yourself prayerfully imagine yourself in the boat with Jesus. Yes, together with others, but you're the one that's there with the liberty of saying something to him or asking something of him. And of course, as you do that, you get the chance to notice what he says back 
people wants you to know. And the point is this. Jesus wants us to realise that while all sorts of ways of recreation and holiday and having fun and being with friends and family, all of those are wonderful gifts and we do need them. There is something vital for life and for faith and for ministry about knowing that fundamentally what we're called to is to be with him and to live our life and to minister from being with him. And to know that that's the big call. And that means that individually we might say, is there something in the way that I'm living my life or doing ministry, which is, it is actually ill-fitting. I'm, tr I'm driving myself, I'm doing something which just can never fit well, given the circumstances of today. And it means that we might also courageously ask as leadership teams and churches, is there something which we're trying to do, even trying to get back to at this time, given the circumstances, which is just a step too far? It's ill-fitting. And we need to find other ways to keep connected to Christ and to one another and to keep growing in the way that we follow him. Come to me, says Jesus, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. May God bless you as you seek to respond to his invitation today.